Hi, I'm Steve Baskoff. I'm with the Digital Scholarship and Communications Office of the Jean and Alexander Hurd Libraries of Vanderbilt Universities. In previous lessons in this series, we've learned about some simple data objects like strings, numbers, and booleans. In this lesson, we'll learn about our first complex data structures, lists, and dictionaries. Just a reminder that if you came across this lesson from some means other than the CodeGraph landing page, you can start at the beginning of the lessons by going to vanderbit.lt slash CodeGraph. So we'll begin by talking about list objects. A list object we could call a one-dimensional data structure. So there are a number of slots inside this data structure. Each one of those slots can hold an item. It turns out that lists can hold any other kind of object. So in the example I've shown here, the slots in the list are filled up with strings, but you could put numbers, booleans, or even mixed kinds of objects in there. <clears throat> in Python, we refer to each of the items in the list by an index. So the first item in this list is item number zero, the second item number one, the third item number two. This may seem kind of odd to start the first item off numbered as zero, but that's the way that things are done in Python. Python is called a zero-based uh, system. It uses zero-based indices. So if we name this list basket, then the first slot in the basket, the first item we would call basket zero, the third item we would call basket two, the number that's inside the square brackets refers to the, uh, p the value that's in that position in the list. If we want to create a list, we can do it directly by simply stating all of the items that are in the list. So, for example, if I want to create this basket list, I can put um, square brackets and then list each of the items that are on the list separated by commas. So in the case when the items are strings, each of the items need to be in single quotes. If it were a list of numbers, I would not put quotation marks in there. One thing to be clear about is that the type of the list itself is different from the type of the items that the list contains. The type of the list itself is list, and the items it contains could be any other kind of object. It could be uh, strings, booleans, or anything else. Uh, usually they're the same kind of thing, but they don't have to be. If we want to find the number of items on a list, we can use the length function, or len. It will return the number of items of the list that we insert into it as its argument. So for example, if I create a, a, this list here and call it basket, and then ask Python to print the length of the basket, the indices of the items on the list will be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. But the length of the list is 5 because the length function returns the actual number of items on the list, not the number of the highest index on the list. I should also mention at this point that in many ways, a string is just like a list of characters. And so if you want to know the number of characters in a string, you can use the len function for that, as we saw in an earlier lesson. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples. So here I have created the list that we saw on the slides, and I've asked it to print the list, the length of the list, and the type of the list, and then also print one of the items on the list and what type of thing it is. So if we run the script, here is the list itself. The length of the list is five. The type of the list is a member of the class list. And then if I ask it to print just a single item on the list, it prints it here and tells me that the kind of thing that that item is, is a string. Here's another example of a list, this time it's a list of numbers, so I didn't put them in 
quotation marks. And I basically ask the same things about this list. So let's go ahead and run that. So here I printed off the entire list. The length of this list is four. It is a list. Now the interesting thing here is even though these are all numbers, the zeroth item on the list is an integer and it's a member of the class integer, but the second item is a member of the class float. And that's not a problem because as I said, you can have different types of objects. So we might think these are all the same type of object because they're all numbers, but actually this list is composed of two different types of things, uh, two integers and two floating point numbers.